Hello there and welcome to the program. This is Energy and You, a weekly show that brings you developments within the energy sector with a focus on NNPC Limited. I'm Elgosa Igumbo. Tonight, an appraisal of NNPC Limited's gas revolution program. Leaders in the oil and gas sector are confident that the national oil company can transform every sector of the Nigerian economy despite the global challenges. And over 3,000 youth core members benefit from NNPC's Corporate Social Responsibility Initiative, acquire financial literacy with business startup kits. Plus, Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPC Limited, Mele Kiari, wins NUJ Good Governance Award for promoting transparency and excellence in the National Oil Company. Details of these and more in just a moment. Please join us again. Thanks for staying with us. And now we begin with top global energy stories for the week. Oil futures climbed on Monday after Saudi Arabia hiked June crude prices for most regions, even as the prospect of a Gaza ceasefire deal appeared slim. This has renewed fears the Israel-Hamas conflict could still widen in the key oil producing region. Brent crude futures gained 0.6% to $83 for the seven cents a barrel while U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures were at $78.64 a barrel, and that's up by 0.7%. Analysts have said global petrol demand growth could slow down in 2024, squeezing second-half refinery margins. This is driven by a shift to electric cars in China and the United States, and a return to normal consumption after last year's bounce following COVID-19. In the latest growth since 2020, Demand is likely to rise 340,000 barrels per day to stand at 26.5 million barrels per day this year, down from a growth of 700,000 barrels last year, as China nears the point of peak transport fuel demand and the U.S. has surpassed it. Deepwater discoveries of Guyana, Namibia and the U.S. Gulf Coast take the spotlight this week as big oil returns to the industry's annual showcase for offshore energy projects and equipment in Houston. Offshore exploration had dimmed after the U.S. shale boom ushered in new and cheaper to tap supplies of oil, with past offshore cost overruns pushing deep water projects into the industry's back burner. Patton, an association of Nigerian indigenous technical oil fuel service companies in the upstream and downstream sectors, has indicated interest in bidding for 12 onshore and 7 deep offshore blocks currently put forward for sale. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission says it plans to assess environmental liabilities before it can allow Shell PLC to transfer onshore operations to a local player. Shell early this year said it had signed an agreement with Renaissance Africa Energy Company Limited selling Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria Limited to local consortium in order to focus on deep water assets and downstream gas activities in the country. Total Energies says Denmark's Tyra natural gas field will only reach peak production in the fourth quarter of this year instead of mid-year due to technical issues with a power transformer. While the repair work is ongoing, different options to deliver additional gas volumes to Denmark are being explored. We are the largest single asset holder in Africa's oil and gas industry and poised to be the dynamic global energy company of choice. We are constantly innovating to be the prime company for energy sufficiency. We are NNPC Limited, energy for today, energy for tomorrow. You're watching Energy and You. The NNPC Gas and Power Investment Services Division last week held a leadership retreat in Abuja with the theme Reigniting Nigeria's Gas Revolution, Collaboration, Innovation and Sustainability. 
The event brought together major stakeholders in the midstream and downstream sectors of the industry who appraised the implementation of the nation's gas revolution and proffered ways to tackle the challenges and maximize the enormous opportunities in the sector. Here are the details. The Executive Vice President Gas Power and New Energies, Olalekon Ugunleye, in his keynote presentation titled Reimagining Gas and Power Business in the Face of Global and Local Challenges, called for a new business mentality for effective business solution and value creation in project implementation. He said, to succeed in today's business world, everyone should be a solution provider and consistently demonstrate strategic thinking, leveraging technology and innovation. If you look back in the last 30, 40, 50 years, there's only something that is crystal clear, is that if you leverage on technology, you will create wealth. Look at all the people that have made, that are billionaires today. Is it Facebook? Is it Google? Is it whatever? Artificial intelligence? It's technology. And so we can't turn our back on technology and innovation. And we need the right mindset uh, for it. The Chief Investment Officer of the Division, Dr. Salihu Jamari, said the essence of the retreat was to chart a new course for business efficiency and sustainability. It's new paradigm shift in terms of uh, uh, our approach to our projects. Uh, today, we are going to look at every aspect of our proposal in the narrow part of business. Every other thing, if it's not sustainable, it's not profitable, and uh, it is not bankable, then it will not be embarked upon. So that's as simple as that. So every other thing that we do, we make sure that we can secure funding. And you cannot secure funding if your project is not bankable. And every funds that you can get from financiers, it must have an element of sustainability. The special guest, engineer Farouk Ahmad, the Authority Chief Executive, Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, in a paper said, with the right support and enabling environment, NNPC Limited has the potential to transform every sector of the Nigerian economy. The Authority Chief Executive, who was represented by engineer Joseph Musa, Director Gas, commended the company for its leading role in the promotion of gas business in Nigeria. From the retreat, actually, it is really very apt and timing because of the challenges that we are having with regards to power in this country. Uh, the federal government have tried to do everything possible to see that at least every Nigerian has power at all. So uh, NMPC as a giant in the industry and participating in all the facets of the value chain, you can see that NMPC coming to this uh, air arena to play it's really a very big hope for the country because NNPC has the power and the way without to play very well and to ensure that the government aspiration for power for all is really achieved. He also commended President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for the various initiatives he introduced through the three executive orders 40, 41 and 42 of 2024, which he said has spurred business activities in the sector. For Sheyi Omotowa, Managing Director NNPC Gas Infrastructure, NGIC, there is need to intensify and expand the supply of gas to power plants. So as we expand our, our networks, uh, going through AKK from Aja Okuta to Kano, uh, trying to cross the remaining piece of OB3, all in an effort to get more gas into the country. Um, in as much as we are doing that, there is need to also have optic and power is very essential for development of the country in terms of uh, industrial growth. On his part, the managing director of the Nigeria Bulk Electricity Trading, MBET, Dr. Inameka Ereluka, in an overview of MBET's tariff determination for power projects, said the nation requires $375 billion in 10 years to maintain existing gas production in the country. Represented by Johnson Akinawo, the MD disclosed that 90% of those without access to electricity in the world are in Africa, adding that the determinants of tariffs in Nigeria's electricity are the multi-year tariff order 
and open book methodology. NNPC's Chief Finance and Investor Relations Officer, Olubenga Oluwaniyi, who was represented by Abdullah Ibrahim, Head Budget and Financial Analysis, in his presentation titled Bridging the Funding Gap for Gas and Power Projects, disclosed that energy transition is impacting funding in the oil and gas industry. According to him, by embracing sustainability, the Nigerian oil and gas industry will create a resilient future for the national economy. In a bid to navigate the complexities of the oil and gas industry, the Internal Audit Division of NNPC Limited recently held its 2024 Strategic Business Retreat, bringing together audit and business leaders across the various units to strengthen the audit processes of the company. The retreat had as its theme, navigating change and excellence in the oil and gas industry. Take a look. The coming together of the internal auditors from across the company afforded them the opportunity to appraise the significant transformations and changes taking place within NMPC Limited. They equally discussed the role of internal audits in achieving the company's objectives. The chief audit officer of NMPC Limited, Bashiru Osman, opened the retreat emphasizing the importance of collaboration and knowledge sharing. Of course, if we agree on our role and we don't come up with a very positive roadmap for achieving the objectives of our role, we probably might just be doing plenty of motion, no movement. For the head upstream energy audit, Mr. Haruna Jibrin, the need for transparency, accountability and compliance is strategic in maintaining and safeguarding the trust of stakeholders as well as maintaining high standards of governance. We are ready to migrate to ESCO HANA. You can see the drive towards bringing about improvement. With all this, will the internal audit keep built? Can we remain where we are? Can we continue to do the same thing and get a different result? The answer is no. There have to be changes in the way and manner we do things. Participants at the retreat commended the initiative for the insightful discussions and knowledge sharing. The company is looking towards uh, profitability generally and work, audit is one of the key players in this drive of profitability. And uh, how do we help the businesses to achieve their objective? That is the core essence of this retreat generally. A key take home from this retreat is that um, we're trying to showcase ourselves to, so that everybody knows that Audit is here to help you. We're here to build a strong NMPC for the future. We're trying to future-proof and we're trying to look for how we can move ahead in all that we do through automation, continuous monitoring and collaboration with key def divisions. We've been the third line of defense, working very closely with divisions like GRC and process owners so that we ensure that um, risks don't crystallize be within our company. The retreat ended with a renewed sense of shared unity of purpose and commitment towards a re-energized internal audit division of NMPC Limited. We'll go on a short break here. Energy and you returns in just a moment. Please stay. Introducing NNPC Foundation, established to set the pace for corporate social interventions in Nigeria and other key markets through capacity development programs, health-oriented initiatives, environmental sustainability, and providing access to energy. We are poised to empower and enrich the lives of Nigerians in a way that is sustainable, enduring, 
and impactful. We are not just another foundation. We are NNPC Foundation, creating a sustainable impact for a better tomorrow. You're still watching Energy and You. Let's now give you an update of NNPC Limited's ongoing war with oil thieves and pipeline vandals in the Niger Delta region. The war on crude oil theft is on and the industry-wide security collaboration on hydrocarbon infrastructure continues to record remarkable progress. Between the 27th and 3rd of May 2024, a total of 278 incidents were recorded across several locations in the Niger Delta region from several incidents sources. Maton Engineering Company, Nigeria Ajip Oil Company, NNPC Command and Control Center, Tantita Security Services, Pipeline Infrastructure Nigeria Limited, and government security agencies. 25 illegal connections were discovered in the past week across different locations in Abia State. In Aqua Odogwa, oil spills from a vandalized pipeline before it's turned off. Several illegal connections were disconnected in Umwajiluke and Iba in River State by Pipeline Infrastructure Nigeria Limited. In Cawthorn Channel 3 in River State, a cluster of illegal refineries were discovered. Many more were discovered across Bile, Tombo 3, Bakana 4, Alakri, Okaki, and Bukuma in River State. Others were discovered in Egbema in Imo State, West Boma in Bayelsa State, and Okri Road in Delta State. In the past week, a total of 145 illegal refineries were discovered and destroyed. Nine cases of vandalism were recorded. In Tombo 3, an oil wellhead has been vandalized. Nine illegal storage sites were uncovered in sacks, drums, cans, storage tanks and pits. In Rivers, Delta and Aquaibum State. 62 wooden boats conveying or storing stolen crude or illegally refined products were seized and confiscated in Obudu Omadino and in Okerehigo in Delta State, while 11 VAIS infractions were recorded. On land, 14 vehicle arrests were made across several locations in Delta, Rivers and Akwaibom State. 11 of these incidents took place in the deep blue water 45 in the western region, 108 in the central region, and 114 in the eastern region. Between the 27th and 3rd of May 2024, 13 suspects were arrested. For NNPC Limited, there is no backing down on the war on crude oil theft until the menace is eradicated for good. To report crude oil theft or suspicious activities within your area, Call the numbers on your screen now or send an email to report at stopcrudetheft.com. Handsome rewards await the whistleblower. Do your part. Report oil theft today. NNPC Limited has continued to reach out to the Nigerian youth through its Corporate Social Responsibility Initiative. Recently, the NNPC Foundation, a subsidiary in charge of CSR programs, engaged the Batch A Stream 2 National Youth Corps members in a financial literacy and awareness exercise. Energy and you covered the event. Organized in partnership with Kudimata, a non-governmental organization, the financial literacy training aims to empower over 3,000 young Nigerians with the skills to succeed in an increasingly complex economic landscape. Speaking at the occasion, Mr. Sani Adamu, Manager Education Programs, who represented the Managing Director NMPC Foundation, Mrs. Emanuela Arukwe, reiterated the Foundation's commitment towards equipping youths with the knowledge and skills to become job creators after the National Service Program. You are expected to pay attention 
to the lessons that will be delivered to you. After the lesson, the successful candidates will be chosen and will be assisted by NNPC with some packages so that they can start life. I wish you all the best of luck. In attendance at the financial literacy training were the NYSE camp commandant, NYSE coordinator for FCT, other senior management staff of the scheme, as well as representatives from Kudimata organization. They spoke on the collaborative efforts with NMPC Limited to shape the future of Nigeria's youth by investing in their financial literacy and entrepreneurial skills. I'm excited with the partnership because uh, I can guarantee you, in my day as a core member in 1992, we didn't have this opportunity. Now children or young people need to learn how to manage money and as it is today a very good thing NMPC is doing so with what I've seen today I can guarantee you that by the time we send out the teachings of today to their platforms they will listen to it again and understand why they shouldn't waste money in money markets in things like uh, shawarma, boga, clubbing, their thing and they begin to plan for their future. The youth corps members appreciated the opportunity and knowledge availed them on financial prudence, independence, and skills acquisition through the outreach. For me personally, as a business person, I would say it also exposes my mindset. With this knowledge gathered from here, we could say expansion, because the long-term plan is uh, to reach more people. Uh, export Nigerian produce and uh, seek more investment into the um, agri, uh, agri uh, ecosystem in Nigeria. And one of the key things about M uh, NMPC is a good uh, player in uh, supporting small scale farmers and uh, supporting agri businesses across uh, Nigeria, most especially around the Niger Delta region and Upper North. They've seen NMPC doing a lot of good jobs in it. Really appreciate them and we really hope to like work more with them in the future. Thank you. NMPC Limited's commitment to its social corporate responsibility is no doubt a testament to the company's resolve to making a positive impact on the lives of young Nigerians while contributing to the country's economic growth and sustainable future. We are NNPC Limited. Energy for today. Energy for tomorrow. The Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPC Limited, Mr. Melikiari, has won the 2024 Nigeria Union of Journalists Good Governance Award in recognition of his significant contributions to promoting transparency, exceptional business acumen, and good governance in the company. The award was presented during the Good Governance Awards Night and Dinner in Abuja. Here are the details. The Nigerian Union of Journalists Good Governance Awards and Dinner Night was organized in commemoration of the 2024 World Press Freedom Day. Good governance is not merely an abstract concept. It is the bedrock upon which our society is built. It is the guarantee of fairness, transparency and accountability in the conduct of public affairs. The Good Governance Awards that we present tonight serves as a testament of our commitment to promoting good governance and holding our leaders accountable. Represented by the Chief Financial Officer of NNPC Limited, Mr. Umar Rajia, Group CEO of NNPC Limited, Mr. Mele Kiari, received the award for good governance and promoting transparency in NNPC Limited. <laughs> Mr. Mele Kiari was described as a dedicated leader whose commitment to transparency, accountability and performance excellence has contributed significantly to NNPC's success and Nigeria's energy sector as a whole. The award further recognized the group CEO's key role in NNPC's transparent declaration of profit for the first time in 44 years. 
Carrie's success in transforming the company to a world-class organization and leading concerted efforts in driving environmental policies for cleaner energy was also commended. The event had the presence of the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris Malagi, who served as the chairman of the occasion. Other Nigerians who distinguished themselves creditably through their various offices in the economic and political development of Nigeria were also honored. They include Governor of Benue State, Hyacinth Alia, Governor of Borno State, Umara Babagana Zulum, represented at the event, and the Speaker House of Representatives, Abbas Tajuddin, ably represented. The Nigerian Union of Journalists has reiterated that the nexus between press freedom and good governance is a strong and significant one. The 2024 Press Freedom Awards on the various categories of leaders therefore serves as a catalyst for them to do more in promoting good governance, transparency and accountability. And that's our show this week. Let's do this again next week. But if you missed any part of the show or previous episodes, you can catch up by scanning the code on your screen now. Do remember to follow us on all our social media handles displayed on your screen to get updates on activities of NNPC Limited. I'm Egosa Egombo. See you again. <laughs>